Woo-hoo. All the answers are gonna be either MacGyver or Mr. Keith. My boobies really are not that big. That sounds dirty. Woo-hoo. Oh, Captain, my Captain. I'm keeping score because I don't trust Jason. <laughs> what the hell am I doing in this show? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's time to kick the tires and light the fires. It's another episode of Atomic Trivia War 9000. I'm your host, Jason, and I'm in such a good mood tonight. Because for the first time ever, we're being brought to you, dear listener, by a really cool sponsor. But more on that in a moment. First, let's meet our contestants. He's got Boyudo Mochachos. From Costa Rica, he's our very own Omar Hernandez. He, he's got what? <laughs> <laughs> Boyudo Mochachos. That's how you say big balls, right? Uh... uh, uh. Dude, I can't even process that. Well, you know, I was originally just going to introduce you by saying taco, burrito, carne, asada, Omar. Yeah, the, the, the usual. But I, I tried something, you know, some, something complimentary. Boludo, muchachos, es lo que te entendí. Dios míos. <laughs> From Washington State, she's our cappuccino filipino, Romantinona. <laughs> I love cappuccino. I actually, I don't like cappuccinos, but I love coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> uh, he's the rad dad who is snowshoe clad. That's because he's from from Canada, okay. where it's going to be winter for another two months. He's he's Kevin Archibald. Is it only going to be two more months this year? Oh, thank goodness. Well, yeah, because <laughs> the groundhog saw his shadow. Ah, right. So, That's a good thing. And joining us from the Our List podcast, he's the creator of a really, really cool new board game that Roe is already just gushing about. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about it a lot, especially a little bit later in the show. Let's welcome our sponsor, Zach Oberath. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. Yay. Yeah, no problem. We like having you here. Uh, I, I want to bust through some trivia real quick before we talk about other things. Uh, and especially because this is a really neat category. It's one I've been holding on to for a special occasion. And it comes from someone who we know well. It's our friend Peter. He's given us something that he likes to call the question centipede. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. okay. Oh, well, boy. First of all, don't worry. It's nothing to do with ass to mouth. So. Oh. oh, come on. I just ate. Ah. Now, here's how it's going to work. The answer to each question is going to dovetail into the next question. Oh, okay. okay. So it's, it's going to kind of like form a train or a centipede, <laughs> if you will. So number one, tell me when you've got the answer. You don't have to uh, take turns or be polite or anything. Just shout it out. In 2011, the Tree of Life was awarded, uh, was awarded at the Palme d'Or at what famous French film festival? Con. Cannes. It's the Con Film Festival. Yes, good job, Zach. You beat Omar to the punch. What? Number two. <laughs> on November 3rd, 2011, the city of Con played host to the heads of government for what international economic summit? Was the G7? Uh, G- you need a few more numbers on there. More Gs. <laughs> G12? Tw- no, G20. G20 uh, is the answer. There you go. Number three. What Espanol speaking nation is currently the chair of the G20? España? Ooh. Uh, I'm going to say Mexico. Oh. Ah. It is. Really? Mexico. Yes. Number four, according to census information, 70% of Mexico's population is classified as what race, which is a mix of Spanish and native ancestry? I would say, no, it's not Cholo. It's uh, Mestizo. Mestizo is the oh, answer. Nice. Good job. How did you know that one, by the way? Uh, uh, no, 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 we'll stop that joke. Number five. <laughs> in Canada, people who are of mixed French and First Nations descent are known as what? Québécois. Nice guess, but it's the Métis. The Métis, mm-hmm. with an S on the end that's silent, just like Maquis from Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for translating that for our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, everybody. That was a pretty uh, pretty nice spread of answers from everybody. I'm, I'm really I happy. I didn't answer anything. <laughs> Yeah, well, that also makes actually, me happy. I was actually looking at something on the internet. I was like, you yes. won the last game, so I'm hoping that these guys come up and you know gang up on you this time okay. in a non-sexual way. Wow. Yeah. Okay, listeners, I need your questions. Send one, send two, send twenty-two. It doesn't matter to me. However many you write, send them to atw9k at simplysyndicated.com. And as we always say, remember that the point of the questions is not to stump our contestants. We want like trivial pursuit type questions that are engaging and interesting. I want you to pull out something that uh, you know we, we it's it's something that's linked 
to a topic that we all know, but we've never thought about? Those are the questions that I like the most. Like and this Peter's time, I'm just there, by the way. What, what's that? I was saying, like Peter's questions right there. Well done, Peter. Mm-hmm. Again, as always, sir. Yeah. In particular, this time around, guys, I'm looking for questions about famous robots. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. This is for an upcoming show. I need about 20 questions or so from all of our uh, all of our friends on the internet. And these questions can tackle anything from, like, Johnny Five to Ultron. You, you know how much we love our sci-fi. So dig deep for these uh, these robots. And, again, send those to me here at ATW9K at simplysyndicated.com. Send them today. So we're going to go ahead and hit a rank-and-file game. Yay! And I know that there are a lot of people out there who have asked for us to do some of these again. So here we go. You four will be battling in the rank-and-file game tonight for a first pick at these categories. We have Top of the Food Chain. By listener Tyler Price. Famous Last Words in Film by our honorary producer, Michael Mould. Who Am I? The Men's Edition by honorary producer Clayton Polisi. And Formerly Seen on Buffy by listener Paul Mackey. So be thinking about which of those you guys want to claim. Uh, I'm just going to say, since he's shelling out the money to sponsor us, Zach's going to get first pick, oh, regardless of no, who wins. No, that's no, okay. no. That's that's okay. Just, just let me play the no, game. That's okay. Don't worry about that. That's, that's okay. <laughs> No, no, I I totally agree. Tonight, I have for you guys the list of the top ten (laughs) best-selling... Sorry, Jason, you're going to have to say that again. I didn't hear anything after sellouts. Tonight, I have for you the list of the top ten best-selling Atari cartridges. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I love these. These are some of the best games ever. Not because they were good games. But because they came out at a time when gaming wasn't in your home yet, and you could go to the arcade and you could stand in front of these cabinets, or if you got really, really lucky, a relative or a mom or dad would get you at 2600, and you could play those dusty cassettes. Oh, those were the best things ever. No, but this question. list comes to us from IGN.com. Quick question. Is this 2600 or Atari overall? This is the Atari 2600. So yeah, the 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 later editions like the so, 7800, the 5600, or the 5200. So pretty we're much gonna ignore any those. game that I did the photo Friday on a few weeks ago, or well, a few months ago, or something. But I need the best selling ones, and the ones as the closer you get to number one, the uh, the the better your pick is going to be of categories. I don't know any of those games really. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump the obvious because this is probably like a booby trap. So I'm going to say <laughs> Pitfall. Good Ooh. choice. What do you say, Kev? Uh, uh, see, I would say Combat, except Combat came with the 2600, so I don't know if that counts as a best-selling one. Well, it didn't come uh, with every would, console. Yeah, just like just like no? Super Mario Brothers counted as a best-selling console for the NES. All right, I'm going to go with Combat. Aww. Still love Combat. Me combat too. was amazing, both the tank and the plane which were the same game with different shapes. <laughs> what do you say, Zach? Oh, I don't know if it, it was a big selling cartridge game. Um, I guess I'm going to go... Uh, I will go Space Invaders. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the, the ones I thought was going to be too obvious. That's a good one, yeah. And Row. I'm just going to go with Pac-Man, because I like Pac-Man. That was Ooh, the other obvious one. I was, thinking, I, yeah. was thinking, I was thinking that or Frogger, but I'll go with Pac-Man. Cause I like Pac-Man. Oh, Frogger. Forgot about that one. I was thinking Pac-Man, Asteroids, or Space Invaders. was gonna, But those are too obvious. That's funny, because I, I went straight to, like, Yars Revenge, Warlords, like the ones that were exclusively <laughs> exclusively 2600 titles in my head. And I didn't think about the obvious, like, ports. Neither one of those are on the list of the top ten selling. None of ours? Uh, no, no, none of the two that Kevin just mentioned, oh. Warlords or Yars Revenge, which really surprises really? me. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you that somebody here has the number one answer. It's probably Kevin. But let's start with Omar, because Omar came so close. Ah. Pitfall is number two. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Okay, so it's going to be either Ro or, or Zach, right? Well, let's go to Zach. Zach. Zach, you chose Space Invaders, which, by the way, I just want to point out, I have a blown-up Space Invaders poster. On my wall next to my computer. <laughs> I made it myself with the, the Photoshop. <laughs> but that does not make it number one. No. No, it makes it number ten. Ten. Number ten. Okay, so Ro is the winner. 112 video games in one. It's going to be Kevin. <laughs> no, it's going to be you, Ro. Well, let's talk about Ro. What about me? <laughs> Ro, yes. you're only at number one. <gasps> really? Hey. Oh, yay! How exciting! But unfortunately for Kevin... 
Sorry, buddy. Combat did not make the top ten list. No. no. Is, it, is it anywhere on the list, or is, do you only have ten? We, we've only got ten. This is something I'm actually getting from IGN. They only counted down ten. Let's hit them up real quick. You already know one and two, Pac-Man and Pitfall, because we covered those. Any guesses for number three? Frogger. It's actually Asteroids? Missile Command. Oh, oh yeah. Missile Command. Huh. Missile Command, 1980. And then number four is one that not a whole lot of people know, which is strange, because like like this list points out, it was very well selling. And it was one of my favorites, and it was way better than Space Invaders. It's called Demon Attack. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, that's that, like, T-Rex thing that you love so much, right? Yes, exactly. It looks like a, like, like Cyber Godzilla on the cover. But you're shooting bats and space slugs and all kinds of great stuff. It's a, a bottom-up shooter. Uh, number five, not sure how legitimate this is, because, you know, there's the urban legend about how many E.T. cartridges <laughs> were dumped in the middle of the desert because they wouldn't sell. Right. Huh. That was, a, yeah, I was considering that, but, yeah, I, I thought they didn't sell. I thought that was why it was... Yeah. Well, the thing is that they made more cartridges for that game than any other. So regardless of how many actually sold, the number of unsold cartridges was still ridiculous. E.T. sold about a a million and a half units. Wow. But three million million terrible units dumped. (laughs) So uh, number six, Atlantis. Don't know what. Which was a cool one. Uh, number seven, Adventure. Number eight, River Raid, which is my yeah, personal really favorite good. of all time. River Raid. Number nine was Kaboom, and then we already <gasps> talked about Space Invaders at ten. Kaboom. So that means that, uh, Zach, since you got number three, but since you're giving us money, you get to pick first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing a trend here. <laughs> which category do you like, sir? Well, I, I would normally would defer and, and play the game with honor, but looking at the <laughs> topics, I will take you up on your offer. And I'm going to go with Famous Last Words in Film. Excellent. Cool, I didn't want that one. Now, Ro. Yeah. You won the game, but you're not giving me any money. So you get to go next. Okay, I will take Who Am I Men's Edition. Good. Because I love men. Uh, more than one at a time? Well, no, I, I have a boyfriend, but, you know, I just love boys in general, like guys. And Jeremy! Oh, he's right here. <laughs> I think you need to come over here. <laughs> We're having trouble. Omar, what's your pick, buddy? You got two left to choose from. What are you going to orphan Kev with? <laughs> hey, Kev, uh, have you ever seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer? <laughs> no. No? Okay, I want to take a couple go. of the food chain. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I love you, Omar. Yeah, that's, that's the way that I like buddy. for that to happen. Oh, that's why I love Omar. He's just such a lovable little asshole. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to get into the hot seat, but before we do that, we're going to take a brief ad break here. Let's learn all about Zach's new product that he's put out. It's called Legends of Adventure. I'm really excited to to learn about it here. It's something that you can invest in on Kickstarter so that he can get it started up. Let's take a listen. Hey there, ATW9K fans. This is Zach from the Arliss Podcast, and I have a trivia question for you. Which early 80s game, which is now a collector's item, had a centerpiece, which was a tower that lit up and made sound? That's Dark Tower from the early 80s. Well, speaking of board games, I wanted to talk to all of you about a board game that I have created, and I actually need your help. I made a board game called Legends of Adventure, and it's a cooperative fantasy game where all the players are working together to complete ten adventures along the way, defeating monsters with various cards. And what I need from you, ATW9K fans, I need some help getting the funds to get it produced. I'm using kickstarter.com, and if you're not familiar, it's a great site to raise funds for creative endeavors. So I'd really appreciate it if you could take a look at either our site, which is legendsofadventuregame.com, and learn more about the game itself, or go right to kickstarter.com and search for Legends of Adventure and see if you can help out. If you decide you'd like to back a project like this, your support will not go unrewarded. We have incentives including t-shirts, signed art by the artist, signed copies of the game, and heck, you can even be part of the game as one of the characters. So, please, take a chance on Legends of Adventure and see where it will take you. There's a couple of reasons why I'm so very happy to have Zach as a sponsor. One of the reasons is because he's a cool guy. Uh, Known him for a little while. He's been on the show before. He's always a good guest, very knowledgeable, so that's fun. But also, I've seen stills of this game. I don't know board games, but these stills make me look, you know, like really impressed. 
by what's going on there. There's some great artwork going on. Ro, like I said, has already been gushing over how well, good it yeah, looks. Yeah, looks great. Very I'm, happy. I'm interested about it. in the mechanics. I was like, oh, what's the mechanics? Blah, 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 blah. I was asking him all these questions. I'm like, what, what does this do? What does mm-hmm. that do? Because I love board games. And yeah, if you guys didn't know this already, I go to two PAXs just for board gaming, and that's it. And there's other things at PAX, but yeah, whatever. The other reason why I'm so happy to have Zach as a, a sponsor of the show here is because, you know, it takes a little bit of money to keep our servers up and running so that we can bring you free content every week. Zach's helping us bring that content to you, so we really want to thank Zach for that. If you want to help us out as well, you can do that. Just visit simplysyndicated.com. You can just uh, click on the big orange donate button there. I, I think it's gold, but orange, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. You can drop a dollar in there. You can drop $20 in there. You can drop $1,000 in there. However much you want, it'll help keep ATW9K coming to you every week for free, just like it always has. And uh, if you want to sponsor something or if you want to have an ad on this show, go ahead and drop me a line at our email, too. We can talk. Let's set something up. He makes it so, so getting, easy. Oh, I do. Just talk to that. We'll, we'll get a testimonial. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So let's go into the hot seat here. I think we would like to start, because I'm really curious to see how this is going to turn out. I think I'd like to start with Kevin. Because <laughs> <Hooray. laughs> Kevin has never seen Buffy before. We're talking, of course, about the Joss Whedon Buffy the Vampire TV show, submitted to us by uh, Paul Mackey here. This category is talking all about different people who have starred on that show and gone on to other things. And I would just like to take a moment to apologize to Paul Mackey, who probably sat down and thought about all the wonderful answers that would come out of this category and he's going to be <laughs> about to slap his forehead i don't know no but i, I think the thing is it says it's formerly seen on buffy so these are not the true. major cast so more than likely it's going to be a bunch of whedon weed nights or like whedon yes. people that have been on other whedon shows that prom- that also was just Ooh. happened to be on buffy for a few episodes that's what i'm guessing I, what this I, is I, and you, yeah i do love me some whedon let me assure you kev that Really, honestly, you don't have to know a whole lot about the Buffyverse in order to do well in this ca- category. But you might have to know some actor names. So let's see how many you can pull up here. Number one, what actress starred in Dollhouse as Echo, a living doll who can pro- be programmed with skills and memories required by high-paying clients? Oh, uh, what was her name? Uh, yeah. Duck, Duck Shoe, Elizabeth Duck Shoe. Dushku. Oh, yeah. Dushku. Eliza Dushku. Duck there Tales. you go. Something. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get the point, Kevin. There is one for one for you. Nice job. I like that show a lot. That show was kind of underrated, but, well, the first episodes were kind of rubbish, but it got really good. <laughs> Number two, let's see if you can build on your success thus far. Who guest starred as Trina Eccles, sister of Veronica Mars' on again, off again love interest and nemesis, Logan Eccles? Hmm. Did you watch Veronica Mars? I did watch Veronica Mars. And oh, she's I know, so beautiful. Uh, yes, she is. She's a lovely lady. Kristen Bell. Lesser. Kristen, if you're listening, I'll run away with you. <laughs> <laughs> the show me. was a lot of fun, and I know who you're talking about, but there's no way uh, I, I would know the uh, the actor's name. Sorry. Anyone? She, Anyone? She also stars opposite Jason Siegel on, uh, 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 what's that name of that show? How I Met Your Mother? Oh, really? On CBS. Okay, I don't really watch that show. Oh, God. I watched a few of those and didn't do yeah, it Yeah, it's me. like Allison Cheney or something. It's like something like that. Bandcamp? Hannigan. Yeah, it's, it's flute. It's, Isn't it Hannigan? Yeah, Hannigan, that's right. Yeah. It is. We've put together the name through, uh, through cooperation. <laughs> Good job, oh, guys. Allison her. Hannigan. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, I know her. I actually saw her in a play once. She was in, doing uh, When Harry Met Sally in London with Luke Perry. Who what role did she play? Did she have an orgasm on stage? She was Sally, yeah. Nice. Wow. <laughs> what? Number three, also on Veronica Mars, what actress stepped in as Kendall Casablancas, a trophy wife who booty calls Logan Eccles after her husband is sent to jail? Oh, it's, uh, oh, uh, Charisma Carpenter. There you are. Good job. Number two, uh, the, uh, point number two, we're moving right along here. Number four, this Buffy alum plays pastry chef Seth Richman next to Bradley Cooper and Jamie King on Kitchen Confidential. Oh, yeah. No. No, no, no. No, 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 <laughs> Sorry, Paul Mackey. Bless your heart. Uh, but uh, speaking of Whedon, anyone going to see Avengers? <laughs> nope. I have my tickets yes. for Saturday, and also if you like Whedon, go watch Cabin in the Woods. You will not be disappointed. Uh, if you know Buffy, 
which you don't. I've realized that. <laughs> but the character of Xander Harris is played by Nicholas Brendan. That's who we're looking for. Okay. Number five. This Buffy Ware character starred with Eugene Levy and Sarah Silverman in Greg the Bunny as a human, not a puppet. Ah, uh, okay. The only one I know who's the werewolf is, what's his name, uh, the robot chicken guy. Uh, Seth Green? Good job. If he faltered, I was going to offer up uh, Mass Effect. Yes, Joker. Joker, yeah. Joker yep. from Mass Effect. Yeah. So for a category about which ostensibly you knew nothing, three for five is not bad. <laughs> Yay. Ooh, hey. Yeah. yeah. That, three for you. five. Well done, so Paul Mackey. Yeah, let's go ahead and hit up Zach. Alrighty. Zach, you chose famous last words in film. Yes, more of a um, lesser of the four evils. <laughs> okay, well, this is by Michael Mould. I'm going to give you a prominent character's dying words. All that you have to do, Zach, <laughs> is give me the movie title. Okay. okay. All right, number one. All right, you alien assholes. In the words of my generation, up yours. Hello, boys. I'm back. That's the, the crazy Quaid brother from Independence Day. Uh, now, I need either his name or the character's name. Either one will work. You give me Quaid, so by Jeopardy rules you work. Uh, you, uh, you win. It rhymes with Andy. It's Randy Quaid? <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thanks. So I have to give you the, the actor or the movie? The actor or the character. Oh, okay. that's tough. Uh, I did say that you have to give me the movie title, though, didn't I? Yes. I think so. Yeah. But... Any one of the three will win. (laughs) Let's put it that way. I didn't think this through too well. Number two. I can't lie to you about your chances, but you have my sympathies. It's so familiar, but I'm not placing it. Uh Uh-oh. It's a classic movie. You know the movie. You know the actor. (laughs) I can't lie to you about your chances. But you have my sympathies. Um, I'm going to go... Oh, jeez. I'm going to go with my default answer when I don't know um, with actors. I'm going to say Kurt Russell. (laughs) No. As a matter of fact, you're not even in the realm of closeness. (laughs) But you do know Ian Holm, and you know the character of Ash from the movie Alien. Yes. 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 Oh, wow. That's that's tough. Yeah. Uh, By the way, have you guys seen that Happy Birthday David promo for Prometheus? Very clever. Oh, my giddy aunt. That is awesome. If you haven't seen that, listeners, get it. Uh, Google Happy Birthday, David. A lot of it was taken down on YouTube. It depends upon which channel you go to, but it's, it's there. You just got to look, look for it. And I, I heard a clever thing that each of the, I guess they call them androids in the Alien movies, they, they're they alphabetical. Ash, Bishop, and the Aliens, Alien 3, the, the android had a C name, and now it's David and Prometheus. Ooh. Yes. But Pr- Prometheus is supposed to be a prequel, so wouldn't they have to go back to Z? <laughs> Jason, nobody likes a nerd. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Speaking of nerdery, here we go. I don't care what you believe, just believe it. Don't care what you believe, just believe it. Wow. Famous this- last words. Is this related to my category? It might be. Really? Uh-oh. Um, don't you might care think what you about... Believe. You might think a little bit about Joss Whedon. Oh my gosh, I got it! And these are movie lines. Yes! Movie lines. Oh my god, great movie. <laughs> Famous last words. Uh, I'm going to have to throw it to my friends for help. Take my love, take my land. Take... <laughs> serenity. It, 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 was, it was Serenity? It's Serenity, and it's um, Shepherd. Oh, Shepherd yeah. Buck. It's Shepherd. Ah, oh, that's terrible. Ron Glass as Shepherd Book. Those are his dying words. Spoilers. Ah, Venus flytrap. There we go. Number four. Take me. Come into me. God damn you. Take me. Take me. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> Sounds like something Arnold would say. Ah, uh, Arnold would have been great in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you say it one more time? Take me. Come into me. God damn you. Take me. Take Do it me. With an Arnold uh, accent, please. You're throwing off. Take me. Come into me. God damn you. Take me. Maria. Take me. Uh, <laughs> ah, that's so good. Wow, I'm blanking on this. Uh, would this be... No, it wouldn't be Ellen Ripley. I'll tell you that the actor's name was Jason Miller. It's a really good movie. Wow, no idea. Well, I uh, can't tell you the name of the character because that would totally give it away. Uh, anyone know? Any guesses? Oh I know. Guess. The Exorcist. Oh. The Exorcist? It's Jason Miller as Father Damien Karras in The Exorcist. Wow. Mm. I'm getting slaughtered. 
What will my famous last words be? No more. No more. Now, wouldn't Arnold would have been like great in that movie? What, wasn't he in that like uh, end of days? Devil movie? End of days. Yeah. Yes. Uh, number five. Anything. Anything you want. Dude, that can be like a thousand movies, probably. I no, I, I know exactly which one it is. Anything you want. It's a last word. And he said it with like a kind of a... We try to do a Hispanic thing, or I don't know. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, he was. So. Is this a famous movie? It's very, very fa- famous. Say, say, it say it again. Anything. Anything you want. Um, I'm going to say Bruce it's Willis. It's old intro. <laughs> it is? It's Christopher Guest saying it. Does it help you? Yes, I know who Christopher Guest is, but I can't picture what movie he was dying in. Um, no. Oh, wait. Princess Bride? Yes, he nice. was the six-fingered Count Rugen. Oh, whew. I want my father back, you son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> there you that's go. One of the best death scenes ever. So that's a perfect five for five for Zach. <laughs> hey, well since, done. Uh, since he's our sponsor. Hey. Yeah. There we I'll are. I'll honor that. I just, that's well embarrassing. done. Embarrassment in his voice. That is embarrassing. <laughs> I'm holding my head low. I think that we need to bounce over to our resident movie expert. Omar, right? <laughs> It's not no, me. <laughs> see, I was going to see if you would jump up and take credit for that. <laughs> but we are talking about Roe, and Roe is doing Who Am I, the men edition. You might remember Roe, but this was a category that you chose a little while ago I as well. Remember. So this is one that you enjoyed quite a <laughs> lot. It's submitted by Clayton Polizzi. Here's how it works. I'm going to give you the roles that they've played in various films. You tell me what actor we're describing. Okay. So, for example, number one, the role that was played was I am a sports trainer. I am a fighter pilot, and I am a dirty police officer. Who am I? Dirty police officer. We need the name a of fighter? the actor who played all three of those sports roles. Sports trainer. See, the second one was fighter pilot. Sports trainer, fighter pilot, and a dirty police officer. Fighter pilot. No. No, no. Oh, my God. Sports trainer, fighter pilot, dirty police If you know the sports trainer and the dirty police officer. Okay. Yeah. You can probably okay, get it. Sports, I think I should have picked this guy. Trader, dirty Do you have police. a total man crush on him, Jason? Yes. <laughs> sports trainer, dirty police. Oh my gosh! See, I keep thinking of dirty police officer as an um, what's his name? God, you know, from in all of that movie where he won an Academy Award for, which he really shouldn't have won because I wish it went to Will Smith. But whatever. Uh, wait, 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 wait! Will Smith and an Academy Award. That, that doesn't sound right. Yeah, for, for right. Ali, for Ali, but the other oh, guy right, won. Right. Denzel Washington. Yeah, I was thinking Denzel Washington for Dirty Police, but I don't remember anything. It's not okay. Denzel, and we're not talking about Training okay, Day, but we are talking about a very dirty police dirty. officer. Dirty. As like in really dirty. Really dirty. You've got about ten okay, seconds think, left. Think oh, of oh, no, all no, it's, Jason it's, Man crunches. It's, 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 it's um, oh god, the other, oh, god, he, is he in the Avengers? If he doesn't shave, he gets hairy. <laughs> oh my god, why can I not think of this for the life of me? First... And he was kind of in Rango. Oh, Johnny Depp? Man. <laughs> you are just not feeling I'm lucky I'm not feeling tonight. lucky at all. <laughs> you oh, certainly punk. are not. Oh god, Clint Eastwood. Son of a... <laughs> so he's a sports trainer in Million Dollar Baby. He's a fighter pilot in Firefox. And he was a dirty... God, I can't believe you... I, I threw that I in there for you. <laughs> I purposefully added the word dirty to Clayton's I'm clue. I'm sorry. Okay. To give you any of the Dirty Harry movies. Never Magnum Force is the one I chose to write down. I didn't even know he was a cop. I thought he was just some dirty old man. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. I am an astronaut. Okay. I am a marshal. And I am a secret agent protecting humanity from the terrors of space. Who am I? Oh, you're, um, why am I? It's the guy from Men in Black. It's the guy from freaking U.S. Marshals, as well as The Fugitive, as well as, and he was an astronaut in um, Space Cowboys. His you name are, got it. All you is, need is the gone name. for the life of me. He was also in many other movies. Why don't you just take a moment and think about it? I'm going to think about that for a second. <laughs> what is your name? What is his name? See, I know the movies. Wasn't he a drummer for Motley Crue for a while? I was. Ex- <laughs> that's exactly where I was going. A drummer for Motley Crue. Only if he would have married uh, Catherine Zeta. 
Okay. See, I got the movies. Say, I have a point. Say Tommy Lee Tommy Jones. Lee Jones. <laughs> Sorry, I'm blanking. Go. Good yeah. job. Number three. Okay. I am a heavyweight champion. Okay. I am a detective who doesn't look back at explosions. I am an unpopular superhero. Who am I? Will Smith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> heavyweight champion in Ali. A detective who doesn't look back at explosions and bad boys, and an unpopular superhero in Hancock. There you go. So one point for Ro. Oh, I, I at least named the movies on the other one. <laughs> but because Zach is our sponsor, we're actually giving that okay. point to him. Oh, hey. <laughs> I don't care. See, that's something I approve of. I, I don't know how much he told you that I sponsored you for, people. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. I am a computer programmer. Okay. I am a gun runner, and I am a Jedi Knight. Who am I? Oh, Samuel Jackson. It's Jack- a Unix system. Samuel Jackson, yeah, Samuel. <laughs> yes. Samuel L. Jackson is the answer. He's a computer programmer in Jurassic Park, a gunrunner in Jackie Brown, and a Jedi Knight in those horrible movies that we don't acknowledge. <laughs> so there we are. There's point number two. Here's your final question, Ro. It's really hard not to do this one in a voice, too. But here we go. I am a supernatural detective. I am an implacable alien threat. I... I'm a former Ohio State University quarterback. Who am I? Implacable alien threat. threat. And a former <laughs> okay, no. Buckeyes quarterback. Hey, Jeremy can hear you through the headphones, and he's like, oh my god, I know this. And he's not... Shut up, Jeremy. Jeremy's a fan. Jeremy is a fan. Oh, it's the freaking... Whoa. It's the Keanu Reeves. <laughs> well, I was going to read it like it's... that. I was going to do the whole question. Because <laughs> I just remembered, he's, a, he's, a court, he's Johnny whatever. Like, yeah, it's him. So we've got a supernatural detective in Constantine, an alien threat in The Day the Earth Stood Still, and an OSU quarterback in The Replacements. Oh, in The Replacements? What about... He was also a quarterback or oh, was he a receiver in a... Point Break. But uh, not from OSU. And actually, I think that was a different sport in Point Break. No, it was football. Was it? Yeah. Um, Well, had it been a Point Break question, we would have talked about guns being fired into the air. Mm. (laughs) This brings us up to Omar. That's for last, baby. Omar is uh, wiping up the rear here with our final category. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Top O the Food Chain by listener Tyler Price. We're going to be talking all about uh, some some really cool stuff here. It's a little bit of a scattered category. Let's see how you do. Number one, surprisingly, there are only eight distinct species of bear. What country is home to the most bear species? I was tempted to say Soviet Russia. You're very close. But then I, I thought pandas, so I said, I'm going to say China. You're going That's to say correctly, nice. sir. Nice. <laughs> Nicely done. That is one for one for Omar. I foresee Omar sweeping this category. Let's see how it works out. See, see, you had to say it, didn't you? I did. I've got to throw the jinx out there. Work my black magic. Number two, what 1979 Ridley Scott film stars a vicious apex predator and spawned five franchise sequels and spinoffs with a prequel on the way? Aliens? Or Alien? Alien. The movie, yeah. Alien. How old were you when you saw Alien, Jason? Uh, Probably 12. Yeah, oh yeah, like me, probably way too young. <laughs> oh yeah, it scared the shit out of me for a long, long time. Uh, still does. Let's, ju- let's just be honest. Yeah, it's all- I, gotta, I gotta watch it again before Prometheus comes out, for sure. The, the uh, first time uh, my wife saw it, uh, we were actually in college, I, I convinced her, she doesn't like horror movies, so I convinced her to watch Alien, which is very much a horror movie, and I had all, all the lights off in our uh, living room, so all the lights are out. <laughs> At that particular apartment, we had a problem with squirrels getting stuck in the drywall. (laughs) So we're watching one of the first scenes where there's someone, you know, looking up. uh, I think it's Dallas looking up through the grate with the flashlight. And all of a sudden, through the walls, you hear, (laughs) (laughs) that's it, that's it, turn it off. (laughs) So she still hasn't finished that movie. (laughs) Moving on to number three. Top predators are often used on coats of arms. In George R. R. Martin's A Song of Fire and Ice, only two houses have animals that are not apex predators. Apex predators being ones that are at the top of the food chain. I'm going to say Song of Ice and Fire. Just saying. <laughs> okay. Whoops. What I'm are they? I'm say probably dragon? No, we're looking for the only two an- houses that have animals that are not oh, okay, at the so top of the food chain. Oh, okay, so they're not predators. Okay, I'm going to say probably rabbits. 
dogs? I think that if you need to phone a friend, there might be someone here who can help you. (laughs) You might want to actually ask Kevin. I know one of them right now. Kevin. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? I'm thinking of like, all the ones I'm thinking of. Okay, we got, we got, we got the Baratheons. The Baratheons are lion. the deer. The stag. The Baratheons are the stag. The top. So the, the stag, stag is, one, is of one of them. But right. the dire wolf kills things. Uh, no, the dire wolf's top of the... Flayed man. That's one of them. That's Well, man's top yeah. of the food chain, so that doesn't count. So I'm going to say the stag, and both my partners here are completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> is there one with mountains or something on it? Or does it have to be an oh, animal? Oh, no, no, no. Um, wait, is it true what happened in the series with a, a finger person? Little fingers thingy? Which is like the... Was it like the sparrow or something? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're um, right, you're right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just just tell you. We're talking about House Tully. House Tully. Oh, the one, the one with the, fl- not, the flowers. The fish. Oh, yeah, Jeremy was like the trout. The fish thing. <laughs> House Tully is, you know, uh, Lord Stark's wife, Catherine. Oh. Oh, she's a Tully. She's a Tully. Okay. Right. How how in hell was I supposed to know this? You're supposed to be watching that show religiously, yes, like the rest of us, Omar. But I gotta say, Rose got a point with uh, Little Fingers. Uh, Lord Baelish is a uh, homemade one. Y- you That's know what? Right. That, um, that detail wasn't revealed in the show until after this category was submitted. So there's a little bit of forgiveness there. I'm still going to give you the point. Okay. Because... <laughs> they helped you <laughs> completely. Someone else gave you the answer, sort of. <laughs> because Zach is our is our sponsor. So yes. There you go. You've got the you've got the pattern. Number four. What apex predator is the first known species to have a communicable form of cancer, and is the largest carnivorous marsupial, and is also a popular cartoon character? Aww. Is it the koalas? <laughs> Are koalas carnivorous? Really? So here's the three clues again. It's the first known species to be able to to communicate cancer. What do you mean by communicate cancer? It means that they can pass it on to other members of their herd or pack. Okay. It's the largest carnivorous marsupial. It means it eats meat. And it's also a popular cartoon all character. All the marsupials are assholes, and they all no. probably eat meat. No. <laughs> Koalas eat nothing but uh, 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 that stuff. Eucalyptus. Those leaves. Yeah. Yes, eucalyptus. Is it on a Warner Brothers cartoon? <laughs> it might be. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say Tasmanian Devil. Tasmanian Devil is correct. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Number five. Very last question of the game. What 1987 John McTiernan film? starred two future U.S. governors and another who ran for office but lost. So it's something with Randy Savage and Arnold Schwarzenegger? You've got the wrong wrestler, but yes, you've, you've got the idea. Oh, it's... it's not Randy Savage. Who's the director? John Macho McTiernan. Macho Man Randy Savage wasn't, wasn't uh, no, 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 you're major? not thinking... Are you asking for the movie, or...? What 1987 John McTiernan film starred two future U.S. governors... And another who ran for office but lost. I'll be back. Only in a rerun. Come on. Is it it's not that no. one? Is it that one? <laughs> no. Even if it so, was no. that one, so? it's not your question. I mean, it has to be a Schwarzenegger movie. He is the governor. Yes. I mean, that that's obvious. It's Schwarzenegger, someone else, and the director that I don't know. You ain't got time to bleed. <laughs> Predator. You got time to duck. The answer is Predator. Jesse the Body Ventura, right? There you go. Yeah, so you've got that. Arnold in California. Jesse the Body Ventura in, was it uh, Michigan? Minnesota? Minnesota. Okay, other than the John McKinnon the thing, uh, which <laughs> Running Man does count too in a way, but not really. But yeah. And then, well, the third part of the clue mm-hmm. that ruled out Running Man was the other one who ran for office but lost. Sonny Landon was in Predator. He ran for Kentucky governor oh. in 2003 and lost. That was close. Quick question: Was was Randy Savage ever like a no. governor or something like that? No, no, he was a slim. Savage was slim Jim. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You're uh, going nowhere. Which is like being governor of Delaware. Yeah, but also uh, that Joseph Coney guy was in there as well, so that counts as a world leader. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good that joke. Troll. That's the best <laughs> troll ever on the internet. So normally in this case, since Omar got four questions on his own and one with a lot of help. Uh, He would have won, but uh, no, I'm sorry, Zach wins this game. (laughs) Because he's Uh, our sponsor. I couldn't have done it without 
<laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> And Zach, you do have your own podcast, the Arlist Podcast. It's been mentioned a couple of times, but tell us real quick what you can find if you subscribe on iTunes. Sure. Uh, our list is my co-host, Matt, and I. What we'll do is we'll pick a topic that we're interested in, completely random topics. We'll jump uh, from politics to games to music to movies. And uh, he makes his top five of uh, that particular topic, and I make an I top five of that particular topic, and then we share them on the show. Um, and we have very different opinions on things. Uh, we don't argue. We just come from totally different places. So uh, it's usually pretty interesting, and uh, I think our most recent one, uh, coincidentally, was uh, the origins of board games, the most strange origins of board games, which, of course, sort of ties in with Legends of Adventure. Cool. Other ones in the past have been oh yeah, um, top five uh, techno songs, I think you did. Breakfast cereals, yeah, we've done uh, songs, that, songs that make you move is what we called it. Um, <laughs> And my- Interesting facts about JFK. Yep, JFK. So we've done um, political scandals. Uh, we like doing movies. Uh, we recast Jaws, uh, the, the five main characters of Jaws. We each recast it with uh, current actors that are alive right now. Including the shark? Yes, <laughs> yes. We replaced Bruce. Uh, it's all CGI. Um, so blasphemy, yeah. blasphemy. We'll, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll bounce second. around all kinds of things. Yeah. Can I get a little bit of spoilers here? What, what was your favorite cereal? My favorite cereal? Yeah. Uh, his favorite cereal was uh, Cocoa Pebbles, and mine was Lucky Charms. Hey, Ro, real quick, who was our Oh, Photo yeah, Friday Photo Friday winner? HBO is coming. The, Ryan, the winner is Ryan M. from from Bergen County, New Jersey. Congratulations. You got all the answers correct. Yay. Do we know Ryan? Have we I mean, talked Ryan about M. Ryan I don't, before? Maybe. Is he a brand new I, photo I, I really submitter? can't recall because it's been such a long time, and I have so many submitters that, um, well, I can actually check real quick. I have actually have a filter for that on my mails. I love it when we get new email submissions, but both questions and Photo Friday. If you want to play Photo Friday, though, you can head over to simplysyndicated.com every other Friday now. Correct, right? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, guys. I'm very busy with my new job, but it'll be every other Friday now for a while. So, But actually, yes, Ryan M. is a first-time submitter so congratulations or if you want to play you can also head on over to our facebook page which is just facebook.com slash atw9k it's very very simple very easy to find throw us a like there if you if you want to help out our page Mm -hmm. and also thank you again to don thompson for posting all the trivia for daily stuff and if you haven't noticed we finally promoted him to an administrator so whenever he posts trivia it'll actually post as Atomic Trivia War 9000. So thank you so much, Don. <laughs> but I do think that that brings us to a close for this evening. Thank you very, very much to our three regulars, Ro, Omar, Kevin. I don't say this enough, but you guys are awesome. Thank you very, very much for uh, just debasing yourselves every single week. <laughs> and of course, thank you to Zach Oberath, our benefactor here. Zach, uh, I really hope that a lot of people check out Legends of Adventure Game dot com and check out the link that's going to be on that page to your uh, your Kickstarter. I, I think that the the whole point of this, folks, that you've got to realize is that if you want people who have lots of great ideas to be able to take those ideas to market, Kickstarter is the way to do it. And this is a great idea that needs to be taken to market. So help Zach make his game. Thank you very very much, Zach, for being a sponsor. You're going to hear a lot about Legends of Adventure Game dot com in the next eight weeks, and uh, we'll we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for having me. All right. Cheers. And scene.